Level 6, Scales. In this lesson, we're going to combine our picking technique with the whole technique to perform scales. Make sure to review the lessons on proper picking hand technique, as well as the whole technique from the previous lesson, because we're going to heavily rely upon those in this tutorial. So we'll be combining our alternate picking technique with the whole technique to produce this result. And that there is a scale. Now it's not a fancy pentatonic scale or major scale, but this little exercise represents all the scales that you will be playing in the future. Now as impressive as that pentatonic run sounds, it uses the same technique as you'll be learning today. But the difference is, is you're not going to waste your time trying to memorize that and battling technique at the same time. With this one, it's simply one, two, three, four, three, two, one. And you can begin working on that and building those muscles now. And then later on, instead of battling technique and memory, your only challenge will be the memory part. This exercise begins with a whole technique over the little E string in the fifth position. So you're signing fingers one, two, three, four, over frets five, six, seven, and eight. You wanna make sure you play right up against the fret with each finger, not on top of the fret, but just right up against the fret. And from this point, you're gonna lift fingers two, three, and four, ever so slightly so that you're just over the E string over their respected frets. At this point, you're only pushing with the first finger on the fifth fret. What gives you the sound is when the string makes contact with the fret that raises the pitch. So you wanna push just hard enough to get the sound, but not so hard that you're wasting effort. And from that point, we're gonna play a downstroke with the first finger pushed, followed by an upstroke with the second finger pushed. And notice that fingers one and two are both making contact at the same time. There's a reason I have you doing this. The third finger is going to go next with a downstroke. And then the fourth finger with an upstroke. So here it is from start to finish. One, two, three, four. Down, up, down, up. And that completes the ascent. The reason I have you pushing all the notes at the same time is to keep your fingers from flying up like this. If I have you do one note at a time, which you might be doing later on, I'll leave this up to the player. It's a style. But for now, I want you to hold all the notes at the same time so that you can develop the ability to stay close to the strings and then develop that stretch as well. On the return, we lift the fourth finger and we play a downstroke with the third finger pushed. Next, we lift the third finger and we play an upstroke with the second finger pushed. Next, we complete the cycle by lifting the second finger and playing a downstroke with the first finger pushed. So here's the cycle from start to finish. And if I wanna do three cycles in a row, it'll look something like this. Notice I kept my fingers hovering over the respected frets over the little E string, and I maintained my alternation with my picking hand from start to finish. Next, we're going to perform our scale over all six strings. And keep in mind your previous lessons when it comes to the picking hand and fretting hand as we cross from string to string. So as a quick refresher, if you're an electric player, you're moving that palm along the bridge. And if you're an acoustic player, you're moving that palm up and down over that rosette. What you're not doing is you're not bending the arm to find the string and you're not bending the wrist to find the string. You're pulling that elbow up and down to find the string in order to preserve that angle of attack we talked about. And then with the fretting hand, you're moving the thumb as you cross from string to string. See how my thumb is peeping over the top? So the reason for that is so that you don't end up bending your wrist by locking your thumb into a single position. All that's been covered. So here's what you'll do. For now, you're gonna go one, two, three, four, three, 
two, one. And then we go to the B string. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. String G. One, two, three, four, three, two, one. String D. String A. And finally, string E. And I made that look easy, but you want to go slow in your practice. And I mean slow. I have to remind my students all the time to slow things down. What I sometimes see is that a student will pick the string before they fret the string, and you end up getting this click sound. And sometimes they get it right, sometimes they don't. But you want to make sure that the string is firmly pushed before playing the note. And it'll take time, but eventually you'll learn to synchronize the two so that it's seamless from note to note, like this. On the opposite end, the student will sometimes attack the string before playing it, so you get a double note, like that. That's a better situation to be in, but eventually, over time, if you go slow, you'll learn to synchronize that. So that at the same time you're pushing, you're picking. All that being said, to remind you to go slow. Nothing builds technique like the use of a metronome. And much in the same way an athlete would use a stopwatch, we use the metronome to monitor our progress. And so we know if those numbers are getting higher, that we're making improvements. And if not, it could reflect that we're not practicing enough or there's a flaw in our technique. For this exercise, we're going to start off at 60 beats per minute, and then your ultimate goal is 120 beats per minute on the metronome. Each click of the metronome gets a sound. So it'll be a click, 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 click for this exercise. And so to demonstrate, I'm gonna work on the little E string. I'm gonna play four repetitions of our scale at 60 beats per minute. Now, if that's too fast, you can always slow me down on the media player or just turn off the video and then work at a tempo that you can perform at. You may need to slow it down to 30 beats per minute. Some of you may need to turn off the metronome and then just work on getting the technique down and then eventually building your speed up to 60 beats per minute. Ultimately, I'd like you to be able to do that on all six strings. But to save time, I'm going to do this as a demonstration on the little E string. 60 beats per minute. I'll give a six count and we'll begin. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Once you've mastered the little E string at 60 beats per minute, you can then translate that to all six strings at 60. Your ultimate goal is to be able to comfortably play at 120 beats per minute on all six strings. And that's what I'm going to do in this demonstration so that you know how it looks and sounds at 120 beats per minute. I will give a six count and begin. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six. 
top-notch performers practice their scales daily. And that's because they know scales are effective at building overall technique. Now for you as a beginner, scales are going to be important as we enter chords in the next level. You see, we can't play several notes at a time like we do with chords until we can master playing a single note. And so that's what you're going to be working towards as you practice your scales daily in preparation for the E minor chord in the next lesson. I'll see you there.